Hi, it's Sarah Locke here, and I just wanted to bring you an amazing opportunity that I was blessed with um, from Dragon Claw. And recently, I've come into a lot of opportunities where I'm given the chance to speak, to tell my story. And I think maybe eight, nine months ago, I was tuned into Dragon Claw, and they do a session every Tuesday called Dragon Talks. And it really helps promote um, you know, the best life that we can be living. And what I mean, we is their whole purpose at Dragon Claw is to help all autoimmune inflammatory, help all autoimmune inflammatory disease sufferers and their caregivers um, to improve the quality of their lives through a better understanding of how to manage our conditions. Um, I really fell into the group and fell in love with them because it's a broad audience across the globe with all sorts of different autoimmune diseases. So I'm not just falling into some place with just multiple sclerosis, but I'm learning. What I also love about this group is they adhere to five pillars for care, and it's disease and monitoring, uh, medical uh, adherence. sorry, tough day with MS, um, and you're going to learn that um, with some brain fog going on today. Um, disease monitoring and medicine adherence is one pillar, nutrition, sleep, movement, and mind and body. If you've all been following me the last year or so, I've really wrapped my head around all five of these pillars in my own life. So it was just a great fit when Dragon Claw came and had these five pillars that we adhere to, talk to, talk about, and sort of expand on, on every call. And um, I was recently given the opportunity to talk about myself, my story, and share um, my journey with multiple sclerosis and what it means to me. Um, I've recorded it and I wanted to share it all with you. Um, because there's a lot to be learned and hoping to inspire and lift those with invisible illnesses to really um, think about how you're living your life and are you living it to the fullest. So let's go. To cover the life and the story of Sarah Locke, right? What, well, who am I? Um, I always say I'm actively living with MS. So I use hashtag living with MS. And today, what I wanted to walk you through is not only my life, but like um, putting through some little hints of where I think um, we could put the pieces together of we don't know what causes MS, but some things that when I look back on my life uh, today and since my diagnosis, it sort of all sort of adds up. And what if, you know, doctors would have been um, more privy to um, this? Is there a way that we could have um, mapped it together to stop it, alter it, or um, prevent it? Um, so the first slide I have is I was born and raised on a dairy farm in upstate New York, up upstate, like near Canada. Um, we we're 10 minutes from the Canadian border. And, um, you know, I have some pictures of me recently. I went um, to visit my family because like Melissa, I actually haven't been to see my family since COVID um, because I am um, autoimmune. You know, I've suppressed my immune system due to MS and I can catch anything at any time. Um, but I point out I'm a farmer's daughter, right? I go big and I go home. Uh, I showed dairy cattle in 4-H uh, my entire life from six years old until I went to college. And my mom would actually pull the trailer in on their way back from the State Fair in Syracuse to college and honk the horn and wave because um, I missed the cattle. <laughs> um, I'm a long way from there now. Um, I was fourth in the state of New York um, at the age of 12 in terms of showman. So it's actually dressing, um, preparing and showing cattle um, at a level that you win. I got fourth. Um, and I always point out I didn't get second because I was yawning. Um, I was so tired that I missed the judge calling with two fingers. And um, I, I, when you yawn, you close your eyes. And I was so tired from prepping my cow. Uh, <laughs> But one of my hints that I'm giving here is through my years of fair and um, in the summer sun, I was prone to heat stroke and exhaustion. I would always go so hard that I would throw up. I'd be up all night. Like the second that sun went down, it was like I got a bad sunburn, but I didn't. It was heat stroke and heat exhaustion. And that's just one of my um, hints that I cover here. Um, my family doesn't have that dairy farm anymore. Um, it actually burnt down um, probably a decade ago, um, which was devastating. But they do have the land. They do have this tractor. Um, and my dad rebuilt a shop um, where he um, operates today and does some custom work for people. 
the next stage of my life is I was the first in my family to attend university. Um, nobody else went to college. It's sort of like, how do we get Sarah there? One, I just told you I lived on a dairy farm. So it was all scholarships and um, getting into the right programs at the right time. And I attended Clarkson University in Potsdam, New York. And I was able to attend Clarkson University because the ratio is seven to one male to female. And I went in as diverse. So <laughs> I went to school on being a woman um, in a man's world. Um, and I studied marketing, which was actually just a small segment of what they had because it was an engineering school. Um, so I studied marketing and I actually graduated from there um, with a, what's called a four plus one. So I went for one extra year to get my MBA in marketing. Um, I rode on the crew team. Um, which was one of, I think, my highlights. I rode um, six seat, which is port side. And I was in the middle of the boat because I was a big girl. And you don't fit on the ends when you have big, thick thighs um, <laughs> because the boat gets narrower as you go. Um, so six seats in the middle with five seats. So the big girls could be there. Um, and I pride myself in that role because you're not big, you're strong, right? You had good legs and strength in your arms. Um, but I caught mono um, when I was 20 in college. I was actually hospitalized for three days with an enlarged spleen. And they really were sure that they were going to have to take it out. But mono um, brings on the EBV, the um, Epstein-Barr virus. A um, lot of studies being done today on EBV being a trigger and a cause, and it's in your system. So that might bring out MS later on in your life. So I already had that because I had mono and they try to tie that together today in studies, um, how many people have EBV. And if we were to get rid of the virus and not just shut it off and make it dormant, um, would it trigger um, those that are prone to have MS later in life? My kiddo, um, pride and joy. Difficult, high risk pregnancy. I was on bed rest at 22 weeks. They don't know why. Um, I just couldn't carry her. Um, I was healthy. She was healthy. Um, but I went into a placenta issue and started bleeding. Um, she arrived seven weeks early, weighing in at five pounds, four ounces. Um, she was four pounds, seven ounces when we left the hospital. And I decided the second I met her, I was one and done is what I said, because I was the problem. I was a high risk. I was, um, I didn't want to leave uh, her alone without a mother. So I had one child and I decided the second I met her that I wanted to be a healthy, fit, able-bodied mom. And at that time I was over 270 pounds um, at her birth. So um, you can tell something happened. Um, the hint here is I had severe endometriosis, um, which is known to be an autoimmune disease. It actually um, attacks your uh, lining of your uteral wall and cause scarring. Um, when Morgan was, her name is Morgan, when she was three years old, I had a complete hysterectomy um, to get rid of the endometriosis and try to rid my problem of that pain and um, Long story short is I was actually at the doctor's after I'd gotten MS um, doing my annual exam uh, for being a girl. And my doctor looked up at me and said, has anything changed in the last year? And I said, well, I was diagnosed with MS. And she said, huh, um, are you on any medications? And I said, yes, I'm on a DMT, disease modifying treatment. And I told her which one. And she said, so funny enough, um, that medicine has cured your endometriosis. Um, because it's not, pro you, we can't use it for endo, but it can be used for MS. Um, they're actually one in the same. Crohn's disease and MS buddy together, endometriosis and MS buddy together. Um, we all know that if you have one autoimmune, you can have two, three, four. Um, so that's just a fun fact. And my mom actually has Crohn's disease and endometriosis. So I was like, interesting. Um, sort of a little fun fact there. And here's some cute pictures of my kid. I'm just saying. Uh, she's, she's everything right now. She's actually, um, five ten. She's four inches taller than I am. So you'd never know that she was premature and fit in the palm of my hand, um, when she was born. Um, strong is the new skinny, uh, used to be my tagline. So I told you I was 270 plus pounds after I had Morgan. I was, um, and I was determined to become healthy and fit. And I joined um, a program that was fitness and I would work out at 4.30 in the morning and 7 p.m. at night and I would push myself. Um, I would limit my food intake and um, really I'd say I was stupid. 
Um, I put more wear and tear on my body in those four years of being, um, I call it Spartan strong than I think anybody ever should. Um, but you know, I wanted to be strong and able-bodied for my daughter, whatever she wanted to do. I wanted to go out and do that too. Um, so I did, um, start four years and I started doing Spartan races and these are hard races. They're all the medals behind me. You see, I've done three trifectas. Um, this one with the big mountain in the back is actually the, the hardest um, course that they have in uh, Killington, Vermont. And it's, uh, I think it's 12 miles. It took me nine hours um, to complete the course and it's jumping over eight foot walls and carrying really heavy stuff and crawling through mud under barbed wire fences. And um, yes, you bite that medal at the end because you earned it. Um, and they do have you jump over fire um, every single race. Um, but I was becoming very tired and very, uh, just, I couldn't do it. My body was just worn down. And then I couldn't even pull myself out of bed for days afterwards. And even thinking about working out, I was just, I can't maintain this, um, level of fitness. So my hint here was age fatigue. I don't know. I mean, as you get older, yes, you get more tired, but, um, you know, I was in my thirties here. So was it a thing? Um, and was it to that extreme? So I work for Dell um, and I do social media and I travel a lot for them before COVID um, to, you know, Oxford, uh, the UK was very popular, San Francisco, um, the West Coast here was very popular. And um, I had traveled to Texas and it was 112 degrees um, for the four days that I was there. And I remember posting on Facebook um, that it's too hot for me. It's very hot for me. And I remember sweating down the back of my legs, just sitting there. And I was like, why is my body reacting like this? And I hadn't had heat stroke in years um, since I was a kid. So I never thought I'd get sick one day and never get better is the line that I say. And this photo with my daughter next to Old Indian Trail is the day before um, I was, I actually lost the feeling from my chest down. Um, so I got off an airplane. I went on this hike with my Dell friends. Uh, we all wore Dell shirts. And uh, the next day I tried to stand up from my couch and I fell and stumbled. And I remember my then husband asked me what was wrong. You know, you haven't started drinking yet. It's only noon on a Sunday. And I couldn't feel from my chest down, uh, was numb. And I said, it's really weird. Maybe I did something, the plane ride, maybe a blood clot or something. That just seems weird. It's a six hour plane ride that shouldn't have happened. And um, I started um, feeling a really tight squeezing around my core, which you learn is called the MS hug. And it's, you know, spasms uh, that your body is going through and it's squeezing you. It's literally squeezing you to death. I feel I couldn't breathe. And the more you panic about it, the tighter it feels. And um, so I was having a really hard time understanding what was going on, but I felt I wasn't sick. Like I felt great, except these things were happening. And the next day I got drop foot and I couldn't feel my foot. So it kept dropping and dragging. So I turned to yoga, right? I'm going to stretch myself out. I turned to swimming. Let me swim it out. And we have a local pond. So when I swim, I just went to the pond and I swam and I did that for seven days. And the following week, I said, okay, this isn't getting better. It's actually getting worse. And um, I called my PCP and she called me in. And we'd been, since my Spartan races and all of my health uh, weight loss so rapidly, we were very keen on what I was doing and making sure I was doing it the healthiest way. So we knew my body. And um, she came right out and said, after an initial exam, Sarah, it's lupus, Lyme, or MS. Excuse me? Um, she said, well, you're out in wilderness a lot and you hike a lot and you, you know, you're out there. So maybe you got bit by a tick. I said, absolutely not. I drink the DEET. I'm terrified of ticks. I don't like them. And we do tick treks like every single hike. And she's like, well, we're going to do a full line panel and check you. And she goes, does lupus run in your family at all? And I said, well, an uncle, but through marriage. Um, so no. And, uh, she said, well, we'll, we'll, that'll be last, but I want to send you for some MRIs. And, um, I said, okay. And the next day, um, I went for a thoracic and the following day I went cervical and, uh, brain and I wasn't in the door, uh, three feet from my thoracic when the phone rang and she said it was her. And she said, Sarah, I have to inform you that you do have demonization of your T12. Um, which is here down. 
And she said, um, that means you have multiple sclerosis. Um, please continue and go get your thoracic and your brain done. So we know if you have any other lesions, but I'll get you in contact with um, Concord Neurology. And I hit the floor. I There's nothing that you can tell somebody who climbs mountains and does these obstacle course races for my daughter, um, for my own health that, okay, so why did I lose a hundred plus pounds um, to just be told I'm taking my legs away? Um, no, this my, no. And that I don't have a choice. And I remember I had my daughter, I just picked her up from childcare. She was six. And she'd run upstairs during the phone call because I'm very passionate and vocal. Um, the doctor heard some words of discouraging natures and um, she was crying. And I went up and I said, you know, Morgan, why are you crying? And she said, because you're gonna die. I said, no, baby girl, I'm not gonna die. MS will not kill me. Um, but I'm crying and I'm upset because knowledge is power. And I feel so powerless right now because I just don't know. So I sort of brought her into it and said, how about you and I do some research on what MS is? And then you can help me, um, you know, determine what we're going to do. And she, you know, she's, she's a nerd. I'm going to tell you she's a nerd. She is an academia nerd. So she loved that and was like, so we're going to learn this together. And um, the following day, I did go for my cervical and my uh, brain scans. And yes, I have lesions in my brain, and I had nothing at the time in my um, cervical spine. But the T2 um, down was the real issue and what we needed to do. Um, the neurologist's office called me and said, we are going to schedule you in October. It's August 19th. No. Nope, our first opening is in October. No, no ma'am, we don't have a doctor that can see you until October. I am going to try to stay calm, but I'm gonna sound like a screeching howler monkey right now because I have a flare going on is what I heard it's called. I don't know, but it's squeezing me from the inside out. I can't feel my legs. It's getting worse by the day and I'm not, not settling for October. She goes, ma'am, I understand, but October. And I said, thank you very much. Have a nice day. And I looked up who was the best MS specialist in my area, Boston, you know, upstate. I didn't care where I was going. Who is it? And finds out that her name is Ann Cabot, and she's right here in Concord, New Hampshire, 30 minutes from me. So I called Ann Cabot's office every day at 8.02 for a week. And I said, hi, it's Sarah Locke. Ann Cabot has my file. I would like for her to review it. They're like, we know, but she's not taking new patients. I said, I understand, but I am a success story and I don't care. So I need Ann Cabot and her support of her team to get rid of this. And she's like, okay, I'll let her know. And Tuesday at 8.02, I called and she said, hello. And I said, hi, it's Sarah Locke for Ann Cabot. I know you have my file. I'm just looking for her to look at it. I need an appointment. You know, I'd love to see her, just meet with her and see if she thinks as I do that I'm a success story. And I said, thank you very much. And I hung up on Wednesday at 8.02. I called Ann Cabot's office and I continued that until Thursday. Well, Thursday I called 4.02. I'm sitting at my desk working away and my cell phone rings and says Concord Neurology on it. Don't you think I just, all of this just went to the side. Hello, Sarah Locke. It was Ann Cabot herself. And she said, I hear that you've been looking for me to look at your file. I said, I have. And I started crying. Um, and I said, I thank you for taking that time to just look at it. And she goes, what are you doing tomorrow? And I said, anything you tell me to do. And she said, nine o'clock, clear your calendar for the day and meet me in my office. Okay. The next day, Ann Cabot had an appointment for Sarah Locke. And one, that is the moment I decided that I had to advocate for myself nobody's going to do it for me. What would have happened if I said, okay, thanks, October 3rd sounds great. And I lived with a flare for two months, right? Three months. 
And it just, it boggles my mind that people out there with MS that are undiagnosed go through these flares all the time thinking it's just normal daily business. This is not normal daily business. I shouldn't feel like this. And there's people that have for their life ached and hurt every second of it, and they don't know what's what. And I just happen to be lucky enough to know my body and have a doctor keen enough on my file and who I was to know that it's these three things and to test for MS. I know nobody goes to their doctor and says, I think it's MS. And they're like, we'll get you some MRIs, right? Nobody does that. So I did go in the next day and I talked to Ann Cabot and I was assigned a whole team. Uh, Georgia is my f favorite. Um, I see her most often. Ann always responds to me. She calls me on the weekends if I'm having an issue. And I always preface with, I don't know if it's MS or I'm old, right? <laughs> I don't know what this means, but this is what I'm feeling. And it's like vertigo that has me falling over and I can't stand up. Um, Anne will call me right back. She does all the tests that she needs and says, not MS, talk to your PCP, but she's always there. So um, that day I went in and they did the whole study. They reviewed my MRIs with me. They made sure that I understood what it meant and what it, me you know, what my options were. They gave me pamphlets and said, you're young and these are the hardest hitting disease modifying treatments that we have that we want to start you on because you are young to be aggressive. So let's be aggressive and um, take those home and look at them. But today you're going over to the infusion center and for the next five days, you're going to go over to the infusion center and get steroid infusions to stop that flare. And um, yes, I am. And I was terrified. Um, I don't mind injections or shots, but knowing that I'm about to get this thing in my arm and then I get to sit there for three hours and just become hangry because that's what steroids do. They make you angry and hungry. And to do that for five days, um, and I documented the whole thing on Facebook. I have my initial Facebook post here that I'm actually um, a couple days into steroids when I posted it, but I was officially diagnosed and went to Ann Cabot's office September 4th. September 6th of 2019, I posted this and it's much longer than this, but you see the level of engagement I got. You should hear the phone calls that I got from old managers that were in the carpool lane with their kid that had to pull over to read it, cry, and then give me a call asking what they could do. And one that humbled me. I didn't know I had that kind of effect on people. I didn't know that my, my life mattered. But because I live my life on social media, they've seen the birth and the struggles of my daughter. They saw my weight loss journey and what I was trying to do to get there. They've seen that I am just an advocate for life, let alone now look at what happened to her. Um, and not to mention, a couple of years before this, I came out um, as gay, um, happily married. Um, and it flipped everybody's life upside down. And I'd lived through that drama. Um, and it is drama at the age of 35, let me tell you. Um, I would have most loved to come out at 19 um, <laughs> like everybody else these days. Um, but so I, my story just kept adding up and it's sort of like MS on top of this, what more can you know the Lord give her? Um, but when I published this, it was basically, I've been trying to wrap my own head around it. So no, I don't have all the answers for you in this post, but I'm going to bring you along for a journey. And I have had people on this journey with me the entire time. Um, and it's amazing. And it's why I became an MS advocate, uh, because I, it's, it takes more than one. And I remember my first year, I'm going to go to the next slide. My first, uh, I think I was supposed to climb it in, October of that year, but I had MS and I couldn't walk. So the following June, I hiked Mount Washington. It was a, a bucket list dream for me. And if you don't know, Mount Washington is the highest peak on the East Coast, um, right below Katahdin and uh, in Maine. And I hiked it with a group of who I call my tribe. Um, I had a nurse with me. I had somebody who could pay for a helicopter to get me off the damn mountain. I had a um, marathon runner who could leap ahead and tell me what was up ahead. Um, you can tell that I am not the healthiest um, fit person in this picture, um, but I wore orange. I promoted and socialized this up until the climb and the day of the climb, keeping people updated where I was. And um, from the week prior to this climb, to me finishing it June 27th, I raised $10,112 for MS and the National MS Society. 
that was a chunk of change that I can't get on my own ever again. That is one person pulling on all of her network and her support system to get it. Um, I hike, you see on the top picture here, climb the top for MS. That's uh, MS Society has a climb to the top for MS. And it's where we're together, you know, building a world free of MS. Um, I do those hikes for that. I have MS for MS, which is another society um, that uses sports, um, baseball, basketball to promote uh, multiple sclerosis. And just last summer, I actually tattooed my body, um, not my first, um, but um, one, I got it on my leg because my legs are what's affected first and they're what feel heavy and horrible. And I got it the orange butterfly because the butterfly and orange represents MS. And then I had it falling apart because it's the demyelization of my, um, you know, immune system and the attacking of it. But the message is no matter what happens inside my body, I'm beautiful on the outside. And it actually leads to the whole, um, man, you look fine. <laughs> can't be hurt that bad um, and does all of those things. So I put it on the outside of my body so people could see the message and get that message. Um, and sort of, I'm reminded of it all the time when people are like, oh my God, that's a beautiful butterfly on your leg. And I get to tell that story um, one more time. So it's really um, how quickly I had to accept it and how quickly I turned it into something that I had to advocate for. And I quickly learned that there are so many people that are living with this invisible illness on their own, not sharing their story because I don't want to burden anybody. I don't want anybody to have to take care of me. I can do it on my own. Oh, hell yeah, I can do this on my own. But having the support and the, you know, the lift of other people and having them know and understand rather than, man, she keeps turning us down. She says yes, then she says she can't come um, to events and stuff. Imagine, you know, if you're frustrated by it, how frustrated it makes those with MS. Um, I'm actually um, speaking on a um, talk Thursday morning with a bunch of our partners from Dell um, talking just about this. And it's called True Abilities and Empowering Abilities and Bringing Your Full Self to Work with an Invisible Illness and what telling your employer actually can help you do. Because there's so many people that don't tell their employer that they have MS because what if I get fired? What if they stand up and they support you? The first thing I wanted to do was tell my team that I have MS and I get really tired after two o'clock in the afternoon. So if you want the best of Sarah Locke, you're going to have a nine, 10 o'clock meeting in the morning. You're still going to get me at three, but I might not be sharing the best ideas um, with you. So, you know, it was just having that and stress, right, causes me to have flares and I can't be stressed. So how do we keep me relaxed? How do we get my, the support that I need in the way that I need it? Um, the last three years during COVID, um, you know, Dell started opening up this last year and they're asking us to travel. There's a huge event going on in Vegas uh, in two weeks. I am actually the command center here in New Hampshire that's making 115 uncut podcasts happen, social media uh, videos cutting and snipping happening where they're sending me the feed and I'm cutting them and socializing them on all the social handles. And I'm like, it's easier to be home because I'm safe, but I also can do so much more than if I was live at the event as well. So I have started, you know, twisting what my talents are and being able to promote that me being at home is better for the company because I'm able to do more um, throughout the day instead of attend all of the activities and try to do it live at the event through a cell phone. So I'm going to pause and just any questions, any, anything? <laughs> awesome. I can keep going. Well, Sarah, I was just going to say, um, it's really a fascinating story, number one, and your style of telling it is very energizing. Oh, good. I could just see so many, um, uh, uh, what do you call it, uh, parallels with other autoimmune diseases that I find really fascinating. Um, uh, not the least, and one we haven't talked about, um, we did talk once about the link of viruses before autoimmunity, like Epstein-Barr and Parvo. We've talked yep. about that. Um, one thing we haven't talked about, which I find quite interesting because it happened to myself, is uh, significant weight loss and then an autoimmune mm -hmm. disease. Mm -hmm. 
And there is a theory that, um, you know, we live in toxic environments now, all of us, no matter no matter what, Where? because mm-hmm. that's just the nature of the world. And toxins, some toxins, they think are stored in our fat cells. And so when you lose a lot of weight, especially if it's rather quickly, uh, you have a release of toxins. And if your liver and kidneys are not up to coping with them, uh, they can cause harm. And I certainly lost a significant amount of weight several months before my knee flared with my autoimmune condition. Mm-hmm. And I've all, all really wondered, you know, Laura, what's, what's the link what's going on at the cellular level? And well, so yeah. And we, that makes sense too, right? Because I lost over 100 pounds, you yeah. know, after my daughter was born. And I did it in what I'm going to say is an unhealthy way. I mean, I overworked myself um, mm-hmm. to, you know, it was a year and I lost 100 pounds. Um, is that healthy? And I wasn't cutting back on what I was eating. I was working it all off. So I was still drinking beer, eating pizza, right? I'm fueling this machine that's carrying me up this mountain. And you work for all of these races. The reward is beer. All of the, you know, it's to eat and I'm fueling a machine. And now it's, I'm fueling a, you know, a, a temple. Like that's, so what I eat has totally shifted. And since actually joining Dragon Claw and you guys had that eating session and where we prepped all the meals and learned about all this, it's just like, yes, right? So that's where I've taken taken in the last, you know, nine months and shifted my whole website. It's still called I Work Out. I'm sorry. Um, I bought the dang name, but it's more <laughs> about um, motivation, inspiration, how to do it right, how to eat right, how to fuel yourself for health and how to make that a habit that then changes and you never have to go back to having the yo-yo of I'm small, I'm fat, I'm small, I'm fat, right? It is, I am normal. I am who I am. And this is my healthy weight because I'm doing it all right. It doesn't matter if I'm 200 pounds, this is my healthy weight because I'm eating what I should be eating and I'm doing as I should do. Um, And our our bodies tell us what our normal is, right? Um, We just have to get it there. And I definitely yo-yoed, as you can tell in the picture that's on your screen here. I mean, I was over 235 pounds again. Um, One, I'm going to tell you there's some steroids in my body there. But all that bloating doesn't just come from um, the steroids. Um, So then I was like, how do I do this again? How do I wrap my head all around um, all of this again and do it in a better way? But that's a great point that it is the toxins in our fat cells that obviously could lead to some of this. There's so many, like when I said hints, right, that it just, it all added up. Mm -hmm. awesome so this is it the more I learned the more I wanted to share Um, it's about educating yourself and sharing um, what I know to the world Um, so I had heat stroke and exhaustion when I was a teen Um, I have heat induced MS heat is what triggers me Um, EBV in my system from mono dormant until triggered could the heat have done that I don't know. Endometriosis, an autoimmune disease that is your body attacking your uterine lining and causing scar tissue. Multiple sclerosis means multiple scars and it attacks your body and makes scars. Um, Are those two things um, related? So I say an orange on the side, right? They don't know what causes MS, but mine's all adding up. Um, I've also done like, yeah, go ahead. may have a question. No. Um, So I have done um, other talks. Um, I've talked to um, runners. This was the one I'm showing here is they were running Disney and um, they were running for MSAA, um, Multiple Sclerosis um, Association of America. And they had no idea what MS was. So somebody on it was like, I used to work with a girl at Dell. Um, She has MS. Hold on. I'll reach out to her. And I I remember I was on vacation in the mountains of the Adirondacks. And I get this text message like, will you be on our podcast? Excuse me? What? And so that's the first encounter I'd had of somebody reaching out to me about MS. And it's because I've started sharing it more. I started blogging about my story, about the depression that it causes, about how you can't bring this much energy every single day and when I don't come with this much energy what the reaction is of other people and you know when I actually um, came out at work as having MS um, one of the executive directors said thank god you were born with 12 times the level of energy as anybody else because you can dial it back down to normal and we won't even notice 
<laughs> um, so I, I take that as, oh, good, thank you. But, you know, these folks, you could see her perplexed look on her face. The whole time I was talking about MS and how it riddled me, it was um, educational for them, right? It was like, I had no idea. And people equate MS to wheelchair. And then they see me and they're like, there's no possible way that you have MS. You don't even have a walking aid. And I'm like, and hopefully I never will, because this is how far we've come, right? Um, I did an interview with the National Multiple Sclerosis Society, and they said, um, six years ago, we would have never fathomed asking this, uh, this question, but who's the first person you're going to tell when you're cured? I cried. I, what? Shut up. Like, don't you give me hope like that. But um, they said, you know, that this is a real question now. And I'm thinking to myself and I'm, you know, isn't it be really cool to say I once had MS? Like, wow. Um, because right now it's, and there's no cure, right? There is no, we don't know what causes it. So how can we cure it? And now you're telling me there's going to be a cure. Um, so I was pretty excited. My answer was my daughter because she was there at six when I got the news. And she was going to be the first one that I tell um, when I get the news that I can be cured, um, just so we all know that. Um, but, you know, it's sort of getting my word out and knowing. And people know that if you're following me on LinkedIn, you're going to run into MS content there. You're going to see my videos. You're going to see the advocacy stuff that I'm doing. Um, I now, you know, next week I have a meeting with our Rotary here in uh, Henniker, New Hampshire, because I feel like they reach out to the townspeople. They know what's going on. They should know that there's people in town that have MS. Um, my daughter came home from school the other day and she said, the lady with the Great Dane in the wheelchair? Yeah. Gretchen's mom? Yeah. She's got MS. That's an MS service dog. You know we could get an MS service dog? I was like, she's in the wheelchair dude <laughs> she needs to get around like that dog actually lifts and helps her do things around her house it's a great dane it's to support her weight and she goes oh so you don't want a dog i'm like i did not not for that like no i feel it's out of my wheelhouse right now um but that my daughter sees that and relates to that and then that she can talk to gretchen and gretchen's like i have never not known my mom in a wheelchair it must be so great for you to have your mom not in a wheelchair um i remember telling my own parents and my dad was like well that sucks and my mom crumbled to the ground saying she's gonna end up in a wheelchair oh my god my able-bodied daughter has just been given the death sentence. And I had to, you know, smack her out of it and be like, mom, listen, there's a lot to this, right? And the disease modifying treatment I'm on is literally stopping my progression because I have RRMS, so not, it's remittent, right, relapse. So it's not progressing at all. And it's sort of like dormant right now. And I couldn't feel any more awesome about that. I'm not getting any more new lesions um, to date. Um, and I'm now on my second disease modifying treatment. Um, I started on Ocrevus, which is uh, an infusion every six months, um, which hits you like a bus. And then you have a gap session where you only can get it every six months, but it wears off in four. So you feel like crap for four months. So I didn't really like that. Um, and I felt like crap the first month I got it because there's so much going into your system. And it's basically a chemotherapy that didn't work for cancer. So they gave it to you for MS. And um, so I've switched to Casemta, which is a monthly injectable that gets shipped to my house. My insurance likes that a lot more because I just stab it in my own leg. And I have full control of it. Um, and there's no more, um, we call it crap gap. There isn't gap between it because it's every 30 days. So as it's wearing off, it's only a couple of days that I sort of feel sluggish and then I give it to myself again, um, which is pretty cool. But there also isn't that window to get vaccines um, that I used to have. I used to have two months of a window where it was wearing off and I needed a new one that I could get a vaccine and have it maybe sort of kind of stick. Um, now I get like two days a month that possibly maybe if the math is right and the universe and the stars align, it might stick. So I don't trust any vaccines that I have. I always wear a mask now um, when I go out in public and I always ask those around me, um, you know, have they been vaccinated? Um, I know it's a personal question and they can get all upset about it, but I also have the choice to walk away. Um, <laughs> I can pick away, hang out with. Um, and I do have, I've lost some friends that they think it's silly. Um, I've lost a nephew and, um, you know, his, that side of the family. Um, and it's just, they make their choice and I have to make mine. Um, and right now getting sick, um, could cause a flare and undo everything that I've worked for. So I'm not scared of dying, but I am scared of getting sick and what that means for my MS. Um, and I always tell people I was diagnosed in, you know, um, September of 2019. I was wearing a mask before it was cool. Just saying. <laughs> COVID was a 2020 thing. So I was in airports with a mask on, just saying. 
um, because I was traveling and it was like, you can't get the flu. You can't get this. You can't, you know, don't test your system. Um, you know, so I was like, okay, cool. And I was wearing a mask. So try to apply that into everything. Um, I do want to point out on uh, my blog and my website on the bottom of this page is iworkout.biz. Um, they're cheaper than .orgs or comms, um, <laughs> .biz. Um, and you can check me out there, um, read all about it. And uh, the blog, um, you know, comes out maybe regularly. It used to be more so. I get busy at work and then I'm blogging for Dell instead. Um, totally different topic. And then I did want to share my latest weight loss. Um, this was just last January, um, these before pictures, and the after pictures were June of last summer. So in seven months, I was able to lose 65.6 pounds um, eating right and developing new habits. I actually didn't move at all. Um, I maybe did light hikes, um, but then modified my fueling as, with a hard boiled egg or a string cheese um, for added protein, but it's a high in protein. And I say here I am on a disease modifying treatment, but I also understand that it's not the best for my overall health with side effects. So last year I started to seriously focus on my nutrition, my mindfulness and my habits of health. So if I ever did have to go off that disease modifying treatment, I'm eating already um, anti-inflammatory foods and I have the habits to help support me um, through learning and adjusting um, those things. And um, I even went as far as um, finding my sobriety, which was a big deal. Uh, COVID, I sort of went into, I am a drinker of all microbrews and, uh, you know, six, seven, 12% beers a day. Um, and it definitely wasn't good for my weight, uh, my mind or my body. So um, last year while I started this, I said, well, hey, why don't I just give up? my whiskey Wednesdays, my thirsty Thursdays, my wine Wednesdays, and, <laughs> and uh, gave it all up. And I haven't had a drop of, of alcohol since January 13th last year. And I feel amazing. I don't regret any second of it. And um, I've actually found a um, water and a tea called Hoplark in Colorado that brews their beers with hot, their water and teas with hops. So it tastes like a beer, but um, it doesn't have any effects. It's a water and a tea. There's no calories, there's nothing in it, um, but it actually tastes like beer, which I've also fed it away from. Um, it, I don't need to taste the beer anymore. So it was a good stepping stone, um, but I just feel like a thousand dollars bill, you know, just waving around in the air um, today in terms of my health and then maintaining it, right? I haven't actually um, needed, I, there's a phases like weight loss, transition and maintenance. And I've been in what's called maintenance um, for the last several months and I'm happy, healthy, eating my whole grains, um, you know, gluten-free is a cool thing and veggies, fruit uh, and not drinking. So that's where I'm at with my weight loss and I feel awesome. The last thing I wanted to talk about is I am an MS advocate and I am an ambassador for the National Multiple Sclerosis Society. And I have an event, I'm showing the hat, um, Climb the Peak for MS here in Henniker, New Hampshire. It's called um, Pat's Peak, it's our local ski resort. And I have um, buddied up with them. They've donated me the day instead of doing a wedding. They're doing a multiple sclerosis climb. And I called it a Climb the Peak for MS because they have walk MS, they have bike MS, um, they have climb the top for MS, but they don't have a climb the peak for MS. And last year they announced their walk MS your way, um, where it's basically an MS ambassador can create their own event. And with all of the National Multiple Sclerosis Society's uh, support, create an event. So I went ahead and um, this is actually the view from the top of the mountain that the climbers will get. Um, but I've gone ahead and done um, three paths that there's one for, you know, those that aren't able bodied and it's the parking lot in the grounds area that they can walk. And I do have cool um, selfie frames that you can hold saying, I climbed the peak. Um, there's one that you go halfway up the mountain and you can turn around and see the view. And if you want to push to the steepest part of the mountain, you get this view that you see here and it's the third part of the mountain. It's less than um, a mile up and a mile down. So it's two miles total. Um, it's not a long walk, um, but it is a climb. And um, at the bottom, I have a fun DJ. We've got donations um, for raffles that all the money and proceeds will go to this climb. Just last week, I reached over $10,000. So we hit our goal. Um, super excited. And I thank all of you who have um, donated as well. Uh, I'm so humbled by the amount of people that just um, 
by knowing me want to donate um, because this is all going to find a cure for MS. This is research money. This is stuff that's actually making a difference. Um, and, you know, I said it takes a community on this slide because the I did a YouTube video where I'm standing out in front of my Jeep in my yard saying, I once could do 10K on my own and raise that much money. I since learned that it takes a community to raise your child, <laughs> to raise uh, money for funds. So, you know, I need all of you and the local businesses to help support. And um, it's been an amazing experience doing this. It's exhausting. Um, it is May 2nd. Uh, so May 21st is coming up rather quick. Um, I'm super excited. I was able to get a comedian. She actually reached out to me. We have the same neurologist and she is an MS comedian. So she only does funny jokes about having MS. And um, I get to hear her Wednesday. I have a meeting with her at noon um, where she's going to do her shtick for me. But I was like, I'll give you a microphone. I think this is awesome. Um, so she's going to be at the event doing her shtick in the beginning and at the end. And I just, I'm so amazingly thrilled that it's, you know, I've had registrants. We've raised the money. Um, I have one team that they actually, um, Oh, I forgot their name, but they uh, raised 5,000 of that $10,000 um, themselves. And then um, Dell donated um, for me as well. Um, we have a matching program. So Dell gives, you know, 50%, they'll match 100% of what you give. Um, so that was an awesome boost for me as well. And um, just having that support of my employer helps me be who I am and bring my true self to work every day. Because those of us who work know that it is your life um, of what you do. Um, so, you know, you might go home in the evenings, but for eight to 12 hours a day, I'm a Dell employee first, and I hate saying that. So now that I can be, you know, my true self and bring everything that I am, and they know at two o'clock, Sarah takes a nap, don't tell anybody. Um, <laughs> um, when Sarah disappears offline for a couple hours, she just needed a little break. Um, so, you know, that's my message. That's my story. That's where I'm at. And I just, I thank you guys for the opportunity to share all of that with you and spread the message. Um, because that's me and I'm actively living with MS. Hmm. Oh, wow. Lovely, Sarah. Do you, to, do you want to stop the recording, Sarah? And I'm sure people would like to speak with you. Absolutely.